Hey everybody, welcome back to the Tableau Tunnel series. I'm Nanad and thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all staying well and staying safe, getting vaccinated if you can and getting that booster if you can. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos and I'm back today to do the first of a few videos that I'm hoping to do to sort of um, create a, a video explanation of the blogs that I've done on Medium already which is essentially all the Tableau Tunnel blogs. You know, um, if you if you if you prefer the text format, that's absolutely fine. I'll be putting a link to these tutorials in my description, and you can you can check them out, and that's absolutely fine. But today, I want to uh, basically show you how to go about creating visualizations, specifically football related visual visualizations using data from football reference which is a very very widely used website and a very reliable website i would say because it has data from statsbomb and you know statsbomb is probably one of uh, probably the most reliable company when it comes to uh, providing data for foot for football data for analysis and whatnot and so without any further ado let's get into it and let's try to create our first visualization using fbrf data So before we get started with building the visualization itself, for those of you who have never had a chance to sort of navigate through all of the um, uh, all of the website of uh, and all of the data that Football Reference offers, um, basically there's pages for individual players, clubs, competitions, and country-wise pages as well. So normally, let's say you want to look at the Premier League, these are the latest stats. You can re re you can revisit previous seasons as well. I believe they have advanced numbers until the 20 from uh, the 2017-18 season so you can get ex uh, expected goals numbers from there starting from there and this this is this is the latest um so you have you know you have the league table here your standard stats here so which is basically your performance rated metrics goals assists expected goals expected assists uh, for teams and then you have your goalkeeping advanced numbers and so on and so forth feel free to check them out in your own time but this is basically um, a, a, you know, a brief brief overview of what the website offers. Okay, so now having said that, let's let's quickly uh, try to understand how you can export the data that you see on this uh, on the website. Okay, now let's let's say for example, you um, say you want to create a visualization that has uh, that's basically this league table for example. Okay. So let's say we want to um, create something like, you know, goals for and against. Okay. So normally the one, probably the most, um, you know, easiest ways to copy control C, control V, copy paste all of this and into a different Google sheet and whatnot. But the more uh, elegant way to do it would probably be to export all of this data as a csv file okay now what this does is this is all the raw data here right so all of this is very simple just copying it and then saving it in a notepad file so normally i do this what i do is Control c Control v and then save it let's say we call it um let's let's call it Premier League standard numbers. Okay, so that's that's our CSV file saved. Now, before you load this file into Tableau, you need to convert it into a different format. Okay, so you can use a number of different websites to do this. Normally, I use something called Conversio because this website really helps with the formatting of the web uh, of the names and everything right so what we quickly pick up our uh, file from there from where we saved it and convert it okay so why this is getting converted let's give it a second uh, remember this website has a limit for the number of files you can convert on a single day it's probably I think it's about 10 the number of files that you can convert uh, on a single uh, in a single attempt but anyway um, so we have our, um, our, our file now in Excel 
So let's take a quick look at it. And there you go. You see it. Um, we see our um, basically the same uh, same table recreated within uh, Excel. So let's quickly get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need. All right. Okay. So there you go. Let me just quickly save this, and then the next step is to uh, is to load this within Tableau. Okay. So let's let's do that next. Okay, so you've collected your data, you have it in a nice, neat Excel file on your desktop. The next thing to do is to connect Tableau to that data. Okay, so when you load your Tableau, um, whether it is Tableau Public or Desktop or whichever version you have, it'll normally look like this. You'll have some of the workbooks that you've previously worked upon, and you'll have all of the different file formats available for you to choose from. And depending on the format of the file that you are trying to upload into Tableau, you can you know, choose choose whichever you like. Now, for us, for this example, we have an Excel file. So let's quickly open that. So Premier League Standard Numbers. And this is basically, um, you know, the, the screen before the main screen, which is our worksheet. So this is like a preview of the data that you have. Um, right now, all the data is pretty clear cut. But sometimes what you have is you have an option that says um, check data interpreter. There's, there's a data interpretation option there that is normally useful for Tableau to understand which numbers are string type and which numbers are float type. Basically to make things much, much easier for you when you're actually working with, with the data. Okay, but for now we don't need to focus on that. So let's quickly go on to our sheet one, which is the worksheet, okay? So you can you can rename this sheet to whatever you want and that will change the title here as well okay so but for now let's just say we are looking at expected goals okay so this is uh, this side here this is uh dimensions and these are measures you can see the difference here because one is when you see these um hash hashtag signs here it basically means that it is a number right and this here is a string. So that's why it says ABC on the side. Okay. So let's quickly build our first scatter plot. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll select one of the green pills here. Okay. Let's say this is expected goals. So I will drag that and I will drop that on columns. Okay. I will drag expected goals against, which is XGA. I drop that on rows. You can do this whichever way you want. It means the same thing. I can swap it like this by using this button here if I want to uh, you can control using control plus W that is that is to swap rows and columns okay so uh, what we do next is basically now this is the cumulative sum of uh, expected goals for and against for all of the teams which is why you see all these abnormal numbers here on the axes but you want to normalize that and you want to see clear cut numbers so how you do that is you drag squad, which is essentially the field containing the squad names. And you drop that onto detail in the marks section. Now, what this does is it creates basically separate markers according to the, you know, the numbers of each of these teams. Okay. So now you see here, you see, you see Liverpool, you see Man City. So these dialog boxes that you see here, they're called tooltips. Okay, so that's why you see there's an option here called tooltip, which is basically this the, the dialog box that you see here, which specifies um, the minor details of um, the metrics that are on display. So this dot here that indicates is Man City, this is Chelsea, Tottenham, um, Burnley, and all of the different teams. Okay, so this is essentially a first scatter plot, but this is very basic, right? So let's try to make it a little bit more presentable. So let's say you want to label each icon by their team names. No problem, you can do that. So that's, that is Chelsea, that's Manchester City, but you see that some names are still absent from here. So how do we fix that? Normally when you see there's a lot of white space here, that means there are numbers, you know, that there is unnecessary uh, lower limit on the axis. Okay, so what I, what I generally do is I double click on the axis and I say 
uncheck include zero. So then that sort of collapses everything. And then I do the same here. Now you see the graph is a bit more filled up, isn't it? So um, now you see now there are better names more visible here, right? So uh, you have Liverpool here in the corner. So all these labels are already by default uh, beside each of the names. But say if you wish to fit in uh, more sort of uh, names in there, what you do is you manually drag them. So what I do is I will drag Liverpool to the side. There you go. You see Man City now. I'll drag West Ham up. See Manchester United's here. Southampton's here. Leeds is here. Leicester City. Can we drag them here? We can do that. We can drag Manchester United here. We do that. And Southampton here. And Arsenal here. And Everton here. So, all of this is one option. But in a in a future tutorial, I can probably show you how to arrange them, you know, how to replace these markers with club icons because that is far more um, sort of easier to read um, to the naked eye. Anywho, so for now, we'll stick with this. This is your um, basically labeling the, uh, each of the markers with their team names. So let's say this is Premier League expected goals for and against. 21-22 and you can change that to whatever font you want, size, italics, underline, whatever you get, you get the image of it. Um, and for now this is just automatic type markers, so we'll change that to circle so that they are fully you know, filled up nice and, um, there you go. So yeah, that is, this is one thing. and. Let me clean up the axes titles as well. So expected goals against. And expected goals. Uh, when you're also using data from Statsbom, normally always it's it's the right thing to do, and it's you know good practice is to credit where you got the data from. The data from Statsbom by FPRF. Just change that size to maybe 10. And there you have it. Um, one thing you could do is maybe drop score on color as well. So that, that changes the color of each of the markers. Again, these co these colors are really random in, in the grand scheme of things. So you know if you didn't if you don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. You can remove that. Um, it could be useful to highlight them by the expected goal difference. So now you see there's a better, you know, there's a better separation in each of the teams, right? So this is your worksheet, but what you normally do after you finish working on a worksheet is drop it on a dashboard, okay? Now this is your dashboard. If this is the place where you do all of the work, this is the place where you present it, okay? So this is dashboard one. Let me just drag sheet one from sheets. That is the sheet that we worked on earlier and just drop it here. So this is, you know, this is basically it. Um, you can change the size of your dashboard to whatever you like, whatever dimensions you feel is, is best suited for the kind of visualization that you're trying to do. Uh, if, if it is, um, you know, it's, it's really entirely up to you and you can you know choose to customize it however you like. So I think this is a good place to stop for now. Um, uh, we'll pick it up again in the next video and i that might be a slightly longer one because I'll go through different. Uh, formats of visualizations that you can create and maybe a few tips on how you can improve uh, these kind of visualizations and some other aesthetic tips but yeah for now this is this is where we'll stop uh, thank you so much for watching if you if you stuck around until now i hope you've uh, felt that you've learned something from this and if you are someone who has uh, just started out in the industry or someone who is already in the sports industry and is looking to get started with uh, sports data. I hope this is something that is has proven useful to you. Um, but yeah, for now, this is me saying goodbye. And yeah, I'll see you all next time. Take care.